don't like endless rain into a paper. Very apropos, they joining us now. An immensely uh, talented, interesting man. Uh, whatever, uh, <laughs> whenever I watch documentaries about Herzog, I have to almost balance it by going off into a different place to watch one about Lynch. There's a great one, I believe, called Lynch from the mid 2000s. And uh, joining us now, the great film director David Lynch. Hey, Dave, how are you? Good, Dennis. How are you doing? Um, I'm good. And uh, I ran into Mike Love at a show I was doing in San Diego. He came to see it. And uh-huh. we visited backstage. And he was so contemplative and so fresh-faced at age 73. And it reminded me that he's into the TM. And I said, I have to get into that. So I'm starting up uh, in Santa Barbara. Uh, and uh, I, I know that you uh, have ushered in some sort of, I don't know if rebirth's the right word, but uh, tell me about your foundation. David Lynch, uh, dot org, I believe it's called. Uh, the David Lynch Foundation, we have many great donors and we, um, try to give transcendental meditation to anyone who wants it in the world. Uh, it started primarily with students and as of now, I believe we've taught, helped teach 300,000 students transcendental meditation. And this technique allows any human being to dive within, experience the deepest level of life, eternal level of life, infuse that, grow in that. It's all positive intelligence, creativity, happiness, love, energy, and peace within every human being. We just need a technique to get there, tap it, and grow in that. And it's life transforming. It's so beautiful. People get happy, feel good in their body, get more energy, more intelligence, more creativity, and they can boogie. I just read a piece by a man in a uh, London newspaper. He was one of the most sardonic writers I've ever read, but he finally had reached a point where he was just overwhelmed by the current digital nonstop nature of his life and immersed himself in this for a scant couple months. But he said after his first two a day, 20 minutes a session, two sessions in a day thing, he felt something already. And he said, I went into it with the most cynical attitude. It, yeah, it was, you don't have to believe it will work, and it'll work. And people are suffering these days. Well, you just turn on the TV, you can see it all around from stress. And stress causes so many problems. There's stress-related illnesses. This, among many, 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 many benefits, is a stress buster. And for veterans, teaching lots and lots of veterans suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, and they get this technique and they say, I got my life back again. Um, we're talking to David Lynch, and you know him as a brilliant filmmaker, but uh, more importantly to the purposes of this conversation, we're talking about his website, davidlynch.com, and you can follow him on Twitter at David underscore Lynch, and it is the David Lynch Foundation. Now, is it... Uh, it's the David Lynch Foundation um, uh, dot, org. dot org. Did you want it? Yeah, it's there's a David Lynch uh, dot com, but there's this is the foundation, David Lynch Foundation dot, dot org. Dot org is where you want to go. Right. I went to the... Uh, 50th anniversary of the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan show, and I sat in the row behind Ringo. And uh, as I watched him up on stage, I thought, my God, what a positive uh, thing this is. Uh, he gives off such a sweet, loving vibe. And I guess he's a partaker, right? Or a big advocate. We just honored Ringo a couple of days before the, the, the event you went to and gave him the Lifetime of Peace and Love Award. And Ringo is Mr. Peace and Love. He's been meditating since 1968. And um, he is a happy camper, a really good soul. And was it, in fact, uh, is it apocryphal, or was it, in fact, uh, brought to our consciousness by the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi? Uh, the Beatles did wonders for, you know, getting this, uh, you know, awareness for this technique. And um, it went around the world because of the Beatles. Um Talking to David Lynch, once again, that foundation is important. I'm going to try this. If anybody in the listenership wants to uh, try it uh, with me, I'd love to talk about it on the air. DavidLynchFoundation.org. Dave, is there anything, I live in Santa Barbara, that I need to know about looking for the 
proper person. I understand it's a th- first session and then three more additional sessions. Right. You need a legitimate teacher of Maharishi Mahesh Yogi's Transcendental Meditation. Make sure it's a legitimate teacher. There's lots of different forms of meditation out there. Right. Lots of people say, well, I'll teach you Transcendental Meditation, but you can make sure it's a legitimate teacher. Probably go through the David Lynch Foundation.org and find out for sure if who says their legitimate teacher truly is. Well, that's what I wanted to know because uh, I needed a proper local so I will use David Lynch Foundation dot org. Dave, when did you uh, David? When did you, uh, you when did you first you, well when did you first start it, my friend? I started on July first, nineteen seventy three, oh. a beautiful Saturday morning. I started around eleven AM. <laughs> you know, it almost sounds like somebody who's in the program and they can cite where they went. It, it must be. It was like that for me. I'm telling you, I, I, I love this meditation. I've been meditating twice a day for almost 41 years and never missed a meditation. I'm fascinated that you were able to ink the uh, panel script for Angriest Dog in the World after you had found Transcendental right. Meditation. <laughs> Folks, you have to Google that. It's a, it's a small thing, but it was uh, very important to me when I lived in New York. I was an angry young man, and I used to read this panel in the Soho Weekly News called The Angriest Dog in the World by David Lynch, and it's one of the most brilliant cartoons I've ever seen. Bless you're, your heart, Dennis. You're an intriguing cat, man. I watched that documentary, and I thought, wow, this guy is a piece of work. It's working on all levels for you. I'm happy for you, David. Thanks, Dennis. I'm happy for you, pal, that you'll get this technique, and, and let me know how you like it. All right, we'll talk down the road. David Lynch, davidlynchfoundation.org. I can't wait. I think I'm going to call today, because it's one of those things, you say, i got to start this, and then you end up, hang on, I'm sweating, my glasses got all fogged. Why should that matter when I'm on the radio? I don't know, but the fact that I couldn't see the mic, because they were all fogged. You wouldn't know what to talk into. That got switched on, isn't it? What's the most interesting part of that thing, besides my questions? Uh, From his part, him saying, well, you don't have to believe in it for it to work. Right. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Oh, man, did that take your breath away? (coughs) Or am I just sick? No, no, no. That really gave me goosebumps. You don't have to believe in it for it to work. You know, it's weird. I should have told him I have an odd thing in my head that I conflate him. Uh, You know how you sometimes have wires lay over... I have a couple wires that I can't unravel in my head. I can never remember, and I can now because I made a point to uh, do a memory trick with it. There's an actor that was in The Dirty Dozen. He played the corporal. He turns up in a lot of things. His name's Richard Jekyll. And I had to literally log in Carlos the Jackal to take me to Jekyll. Because for years, when I would think of that young man, I'd think of the name Richard Champlain. And I could not get it out of my head. And it absolutely fascinated me that I had literally had to break it, like with some sort of mental karate chop using Carlos the Jackal. And I hated annotating him with some sort of negative force because I always find him to be an ebullient young man in the films. But uh, finally, as you can see, I I was able to go do the mid-step and get the name Richard Jekyll. So I always had that weird wire overlay. And I cannot think of waiting for Godot or Samuel Beckett without assigning David Lynch's face to Samuel Beckett. And periodically, maybe once a year or something, and I don't think about waiting for Godot. It's not like I'm waiting for waiting for Godot all the time. But uh, it just pops into my head when my head's running. And I immediately assign Lynch's face. And then I have to go maybe once a year to reestablish Beckett's face in my head because it's such a great face. And I can see uh, the Lynchian overlap there. You got any weird brain wires? You know, I used to be fascinated by Richard Reardon's when he was the uh, mayor. Was he the governor or the mayor? What was he, Christian? Mayor of uh, L.A.? He was, yeah, he was the mayor of L.A. And you remember he said that you're a dirty little girl to that girl? He was in a school, and uh, she said something, and he said, he just couldn't stop himself. He could not. It was weird. I thought, oh, there's a wire that's you know flashing on the ground. Uh, let's go to Gene in Philly. It sounds like he's in the middle of a meditation course. Hey, Gene. Yeah, hi. Um, I'm about halfway through a, a course on meditation. It's it's not TM, but it's it's based on mindfulness and and meditation, which is the mindfulness part is really more about slowing down your experiences so you you know you don't always find yourself rushing through a meal without so you're drinking romalar again is what you're telling me <laughs> it's romalation we call it 
<laughs> I read about this, mindfulness, while I was researching TM. I'm going to try TM because I like the switched on sound and uh, in Lynch's voice. Uh, but I will go to the mindfulness, knowing that Gene and Philly, one of our most agile intellects here, really a man for all seasons, a renaissance man, is partaking of it. But it sounded like more work than this. And uh, in mental fulfillment, I'm looking for a big, big honkin' lazy corner. This is the Dennis Miller Show.